Hi everyone, it's Sheena with Dancing Daisy Designs and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Iron Orchid Designs decor molds to add pizzazz to things around your house or projects that you might be working on. I'm going to be using IOD molds to, to make my raised collage and I'm also going to be using Iron Orchid Designs air dry clay and this is my favorite because I feel like it works the best out of all of the the clays that I've tried. There's lots of other ones you can also use. Um, some people even use hot glue in these molds. They're, for, they're perfectly fine for that. Um, so these are my favorites and these are the ones I'm going to be using. This one is called Monarchs and it has uh, butterflies, dragonfly, and moths. This is an older one and this one is called Molding one and it's just some borders and I'm gonna be using this one As you can see the difference between the old ones and the new ones the the older molds are much smaller these new ones are, are big and You get a lot more bang for your buck This one is called Harper and it's just alphabet and numbers This one is called heirloom roses and look at that detail in the roses isn't that beautiful and I love this one because it has the open roses it has the buds the leaves and stem so I mean you could do so many different things with this and I can't wait to try this one I haven't tried this one before next I have bird song and this one has a variety of different birds and then this one is my super favorite and it's called he loves me and it's daisies so to get started let's open up our clay and this clay will dry out pretty fast so you want to make sure to put it in a ziploc bag in between uses so right now we're just going to grab a chunk out and we're just going to grab about the size we think we'll need for our mold. And we're going to stick this in the Ziploc baggie so it stays nice and fresh. And then we're just going to kind of work this in our hands a little bit, kind of like Play-Doh, just to kind of warm it up and make it more pliable. Okay. And then we're going to take our first mold and you don't have to do this but it seems to make it a lot easier this is cornstarch and i just have a little brush here um, you could use any brush really and then you just kind of want to brush the inside of your mold with the cornstarch and this just helps to ensure that your clay is going to release release really easy and I'm just going to do a couple of them here because I'm going to use more than one. And then I'm just going to kind of do that just to get the excess out. So let's do our first flower here. And what you do is just kind of set the, the clay in there and then just start pressing it into the mold. And you want to make sure that you get all the way to the edges. And just keep pushing it down until you feel like you've got it well set in there and then these newer molds have what's called a micro rim can you see that on the edge there that makes it a lot easier to get the excess clay off so you just kind of take your thumb and run it from the from kind of like the middle out to the edge and just pull off the extra clay just like that And I do that until I've got most of it off and then I just like to use an old gift card for this and I go I work from the center out and I just kind of push to get the extra out of the center area because it's not as easy to push that out with your thumb without making a big old dent in your mold so I do that and then I just take the excess and set it aside because we're gonna reuse that so now that I've got this all nice and smooth, what you do is you just flip it over, grab the edge of your mold and kind of push down and then peel it up just like that. And your mold's just gonna pop right out. 
So there's our first mold, our pretty daisy, and look at how nice that looks. Look at the beautiful detail. Isn't that nice? Very pretty. Just so you know, when you're making a lot of molds like I am right now, you can put them in the freezer. Just put them in some plastic and put them in the freezer and you can keep them overnight like that. And then when you take them out the next day, they're still gonna be nice and fresh like this. And it's easier to glue them when they're, when they're still wet and not dry. So that's the reason for that. These molds are so versatile. You can use them in many different applications. You can use them doing baked goods, sugar art, you can make soaps, jewelry, applique pieces like we're doing here today. And I'm sure that there's a lot of other things that you can think of to use these for. The IOD paper clay itself is a very high quality clay. And it is an air dry clay, so there's no baking required. You may have some shrinking, warping, or cracking with this clay, but that's typical of paper clay. And I find with this, with this particular clay, I don't get a lot of that at all. If you want a really pristine, perfect casting, then I would recommend using resin. Resin's gonna give you that perfect look. And with paper clay, you, you wanna glue it on to your piece before the clay is dry. It's, when it's pliable, it's a lot easier to glue down and um, you can go around corners or put it on an uneven surface. You can do the same thing with resin as long as you pull it out and use it before it's completely hardened. Now resin can't really go all the way around a corner. I mean you might get, it might snap, so you might want to keep that in mind too. Now, if you're putting it on a vertical surface, if you're gluing it to a vertical surface, then you might want to use a little piece of blue tape or something like that, just to hold it in place while the glue sets so that it doesn't slide down the side of your piece. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those down below in the comments and I'll get back to you right away. And if you're interested in trying out any of these awesome products, please go to my website dancingdaisydesigns.com where you can find the Iron Orchid Designs products that I used in this video. Got my molds all done and now I'm going to be putting them on my box and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use I'm just going to use wood glue. I find it easiest just to put some on a paper plate because the stuff always comes out really slow and then my topper gets clogged up or it's too hard to push and I just run into all kinds of issues so I like to do it that way. And I'm going to use I'm going to use a popsicle stick. You could use a brush if you want to apply the glue. So now we're just going to take our box. We're going to find what the front and then we're just going to start I'm just going to kind of place some stuff on here to start putting together my design and then I'll glue it on. On. they're starting to dry and so we need to get them on here so what you do is you just get a little bit of glue on your brush or your stick and just apply it to the back and you don't want like a thick drippy coat you want just a thin and a thin coat but not so thin that you don't think it's gonna stick you know what I mean so as you can see how I'm doing it about like that is good 
You don't want it like oozing out the edges too much. Um, when we paint it, it will disguise some of the oozing if you get some, but you don't want a lot. So you just put the glue on and then you place it and just gently push it down to make sure that it is stuck on there in all of the places. And make sure, especially when you got these, these smaller little edges, you want to make sure that those are stuck down good. Because those, um, if not stuck down, they might break. And you don't want that to happen. What I do is while it's drying, for the first couple hours, I'll just come along every like 30 minutes or so and just kind of push down anywhere that looks like it needs to be stuck a little better just to, to make sure that we get a really good stick. These letters started to dry and so they're gonna be a little difficult to play with here um, because they're gonna crack a little bit. So um, on these little thin guys, you wanna work more quickly. And like I said before, I broke my E and so I'm gonna have to fix that with the gluing. See, it broke into three pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the end here with the word. That way I don't run out of space going this way and I'm gonna work this way. Okay, I've got everything glued on here and now, I show, now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna address these parts of the rows here to make it look more complete. So you just get a little bit more of the wet clay. Sorry, I got glue fingers. <laughs> and you just take a little piece and you're just gonna kind of use it to mold like in the gaps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get like a little piece, the size that I think that I need to fill in the little gap. I'm gonna put a little glue on the back of it and then glue side down. I'm just gonna kind of smush it into the gap carefully because you don't want to disorient orientate your whole piece there. It's still wet. And then just kind of massage it into the gap just like that. And you can smooth it a little bit into the one next to it. Just like that. And then it looks like it's one piece. And now up here on the rows, I like to make it look a little bit more realistic because that looks kind of plain right now. So I'm just gonna make like a little like a little thing to go on the edge of it, kind of like you see in nature. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna get my little piece of clay and then I'm gonna mold it how I would like. And it's probably kind of hard to see exactly what I'm doing here because there's glue mushing out the side. But I like to do that on each side. And I think that makes it look a little bit more realistic for the rose. See what I mean there? watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, to buy any of the products that you saw me use in this video, go ahead and check out my website, dancingdaisydesigns.com. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe and the like button down below. And thanks for watching.